I'm a toxicologist and today we're talking about some of the worst types of baby products that I cannot stand. With 23 years of experience studying how chemicals impact developing bodies, I've learned that even products that are labeled gentle can still contain hormone disruptors. It's not about one exposure, one ingredient or one product. It's about the buildup during the most critical years of development. So keep watching to learn about the products that I hate as a toxicologist safer products I would use on my kids and the shocking truth about how today's exposures impact your great grandchildren through permanent changes to their DNA. Now here's something you're probably using multiple times a day, baby wipes. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. One contains hidden hormone disruptors that get absorbed through your baby's most sensitive skin. And the other costs just six cents per wipe and is much safer. Can you guess which one is which? Well, first, let me tell you about the safest wipes that I've ever used. They cost almost nothing and you probably already own them. I will reveal what that is in just a moment, but first, the products that actually make me angry as a toxicologist are Pampers Clean and Calm Baby Wipes in Cotton Blossom Scent and Huggies Natural Care Refreshing Scented Baby Wipes. Fragrances in baby products, in my opinion, should be outlawed because fragrances are code for endocrine disrupting phthalates. Not to mention they can also contain carcinogens and allergens that children just simply don't need to be exposed to. And brands do not have to list phthalates on the label because they are hidden and buried under the word fragrance, which is a regulatory legal loophole. But the big problem is that these chemicals are absorbed through your child's skin. And they have been linked to early puberty, infertility issues, and lifelong metabolic disorders like obesity. So just using wipes six times a day adds up to 2000 potential hormonal hits before your child is the age of one. And because they're used in the diaper area, which is one of the most absorbent and sensitive parts of your child's body, it's covered with a diaper, it's occluded. This increases chemical penetration and absorption in the worst location. And to make things worse, some of the chemicals that are used in fragrances have been banned from plastic toys because they're too dangerous, but yet somehow they're allowed in baby wipes that are used in the reproductive area. It is absolutely mind blowing. And it's so sad because some parents use even baby wipes on their children's faces and hands because nobody tells us this stuff. The wipes that I personally use are Eco by Natty unscented wipes. They are plastic free, compostable, there aren't any hidden fragrances or hormone disruptors. But if you can't source those, another option that you can find in stores that is clean is Honest Brand fragrance-free clean conscious wipes. I'm going to tag the products that I'm talking about in this video, but if you can't find them, make sure to check the description, especially because there are often coupon codes that you can use to save money. When my kids were young, especially when we were in the house, I would simply just wash my baby's bottom, basically holding them over the toilet and pouring water over their diaper area, especially for number two. So then any particles would just fall into the toilet and you can flush them. And then I would just pat dry with a clean cotton towel or even some toilet paper if I didn't have a towel handy. Basically, you don't need wipes, especially if you're at home. But let's say if they did a number one and you want to change their diaper on the diaper changing table, then you can just grab a little bottle of water and also the same clean cloth and just put the water on their diaper area, wipe, and then let it dry before you put the diaper back on. That worked really well for us and I didn't have problems with diaper rash in any of my kids. And if you're out and about, you can do the same thing. Just carry the bottle of fresh water with some dry wipes in your diaper bag. Just moisten the area, wipe and toss. But make sure that you refill that bottle with fresh water every time and don't leave that water sitting for long periods of time because of microbial contamination and bacterial growth. Now I'm going to expose one of the biggest marketing lies and scams in the baby product industry, which is baby shampoo because the word baby on the label doesn't actually mean it's safer. It's a marketing term and it hits parents the hardest because we all want to protect our babies from harm. 
So exploiting this human need is actually diabolical because if you compare the ingredients list on countless baby products versus the regular adult counterparts, they're most often identical. Not to mention that many baby shampoos still contain harsh sulfates that will strip your baby's skin barrier. And because that barrier is still developing, it's far more sensitive than adult skin. So you really don't want to disrupt it. And the crazy part is that ingredients like sodium lauryl sulfate or SLS are known allergens. So why are they putting these ingredients in baby products? Are they really wanting babies to develop allergies? I mean, I think you can understand that the main reason they use these ingredients is really for profit. So when you're using products with SLS or other similar harsh surfactants, you're disrupting the skin's barrier function, which allows more chemical penetration and therefore absorption into the bloodstream. And when you do that, it can increase inflammation, eczema, and microbiome disruption in the skin. So try your best to make sure to avoid these types of ingredients in your baby products so that bath time isn't a toxic hit. And one of the baby products that really shocked me is Aveeno Baby Daily Moisture Gentle Baby Body Wash and Shampoo, okay? This contains fragrance and acrylates. This is microplastics and endocrine disruptors. A brand that I trust that I have used is Earth Mama. They make an unscented baby wash, which I'm gonna tag in this video for your convenience. It's organic, minimally processed, and contains plant-derived ingredients. So there are no cocktails of synthetic, undisclosed, unpronounceable ingredients. An option that you can find in stores is actually pipette fragrance-free baby wash and shampoo, which I've seen at Target, and I'm also tagging here. This is important because your baby's skin absorbs some of what you put on it. And so that's why I say that we should choose products that you wouldn't be petrified if your child happened to accidentally swallow some. And this next category could be affecting your baby's future fertility. And of course, it's also hidden. So imagine this, every time your baby is chewing on that plastic teether, it's like handing them a hormone pill because phthalates are leaching from them. Also. BPA from their bottles where you give them milk. And they're also crawling on vinyl flooring, which is really common in a lot of homes. These all increase the exposure during critical sensitive windows of their development to harmful chemicals like endocrine disruptors. Another one is polycarbonate plastic bottles and toys that are made with BPA and phthalates. And these are not chemically bound to those materials. They shed microplastics and they leach into whatever comes in contact with them. And these mimic estrogens, so they're known as xenoestrogens, and these interfere with reproductive development, but also brain development. And some of them have been banned in other baby products because supposedly they were too dangerous, but how are they still used in some places, but not others? And a lot of companies exploit these loopholes and your baby pays the price because they're putting things in their mouths and their faces are close to the ground. A lot of these chemicals bind to the dust in your home. So dust that is settled on the floor and your baby's crawling around, that's getting kicked up and they could be exposed for hours at a time. And we won't see the effects today or tomorrow. They usually show up later in life, like early puberty or fertility problems as an adult. I'm personally not a fan of plastic toys teethers or baby bottles because one study found that plastic teethers leached parabens which are endocrine disruptors what i would choose instead are glass bottles with natural rubber nipples this would be the gold standard but it's not always the easiest to source so you can look for natural rubber or untreated wood teethers also as safer options and these were not available when my kids were young but i found these hearth and hand wooden rattles at Target, and I wouldn't be overly concerned if my baby chewed on them. There is one option that is painted with colors. I would choose the unpainted one just to be on the safe side because they don't always disclose what's in their paints, so you don't know what's going in your child's mouth. I also found that Target has this Sylvie natural rubber teether, which could also work really well. And these are safer because the materials are less processed and they can hold up to babies chewing and chomping without leaching toxic chemicals and microplastics. Medical grade silicone is also an option that you can find in most stores, but it's not as eco-friendly. Not to mention glass bottles are durable, they don't leach and they're easy to clean and they don't hold on to smells or get stained. We used the Dr. Brown's glass bottles for one of our kids, even though I was not a fan of the plastic tube that touches the milk 
that was the only thing that she would take. So we had to do what we had to do because she needed to eat. And then our second baby preferred Philips bottles, both of which are online and in store. So every child's different, just go with whatever works best for your family, but just know that there are safer options in stores, which is great. Every single parent needs to know this, but it is rarely mentioned in mainstream parenting advice. Your child's detox system doesn't fully mature until around the age of 10. And since babies can't detoxify chemicals like we can, like adults, their liver and detox organs simply aren't capable yet. So that means the same exposure that you and I would experience that might barely affect us could be much more harmful to them. And just because your baby seems fine on the surface does not mean that their DNA has not been altered by these chemicals. Because what we're seeing now are transgenerational and epigenetic toxicity, which means that these chemical exposures change the DNA, which can be passed to subsequent generations like your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. So this is an emerging field of science and there's new data every day and most pediatricians are not trained on this. So you have to be the one to take this on, defend your child basically. So you wouldn't smoke while you're pregnant because you don't wanna harm your child or their children, right? So why would you want to avoid or ignore what I'm telling you about right now about endocrine disruptors and microplastics? Just remember that the baby products you're choosing today can impact your family for decades maybe even a hundred years or more, depending on what type of chemicals are in there. And this is not meant to scare you. It is meant to give you the power to make informed choices to protect your children and their children and their children. So I know this might feel like a lot. Let me give you my toxicologist mom shopping framework that will help you cut through all the marketing, all the confusion and a whole lot of stress. I'm going to present them as ideas rather than rules because nothing is set in stone, new data emerges every day. So just use these as guidelines. So the first idea is if you can't pronounce an ingredient, make sure to look it up right away because a lot of ingredients are extremely hard to read and understand. And they are unfortunately sometimes designed to confuse you because companies rely on parents trusting that if it's baby product on the shelf, it must be safe, but that's not always the case. Idea number two is to start with the highest exposure items first, meaning the products that you use the most often. Things like baby wipes, shampoos, lotions, and especially anything that goes in the diaper area. Just these swaps alone can eliminate thousands of exposures this year. So make sure to master those categories before moving on to anything else to prevent overwhelm. Idea number three are budget friendly transitions without guilt. Remember that you don't have to throw out everything overnight. Swap products when you need to replenish instead of replacing a full bottle. Look for deals, buy in bulk, choose simple alternatives. You can ask friends and family for hand-me-downs. This has saved us thousands of dollars in baby clothes and school uniforms and so many other things. And oftentimes the most cheap and safe option are things like a cut up old t-shirt that you have, a cotton t-shirt you can repurpose as wipes. You are not a bad parent for using conventional products. I know the mom guilt can be real and I'm not trying to do this to any parent out there. This is for your information so that you can take action to protect your baby's health. We can't go back in time. So don't think about the exposures that have already happened. Think about what you can do today, right now to make a difference in your child's life tomorrow. As a toxicologist and a mom, I want you to know that every single swap that you or step take to reduce your child's toxic exposure matters because you've already taken the most powerful step, which is paying attention. You've watched this video, you've made it this far. That means that you are a protective and intentional parent and that is not unnoticed. You don't need to be perfect, but being informed gives you the power to make better choices for your family's health. And a lot of these companies are making products that do not protect your baby. So that's your job. But guess what? You are doing an amazing job just by listening and taking this information and implementing it in your own life. So question the labels, talk to brands, ask them questions if their website is ambiguous so that you can uncover any hidden dangers. And if you're the kind of parent who is questioning every label and claim, you are my type of person. So if this video opened your eyes to hidden dangers and baby products, hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss any videos that I'm publishing every week. The more that people know about these hidden loopholes, 
the harder it is for these companies to get away with it. So make sure to share this video with other parents that need to see it. Your baby's health depends on the choices that you make today, and I know that you'll make them count. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.